This is it. The end of humankind is upon us, and history will forever remember this moment as when it all went wrong. And yet, because you're inescapably imbued with the human spirit, you do not give up hope. Instead, you plan to witness the apocalypse and live to tell the tale. So, how exactly are you going to do that? This is Unveiled, and today we're taking a closer look at 100 things you need to think about to survive the end of civilization. Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one, and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. For this video, we've gathered a wealth of information to equip you for apocalyptic survival, and divided it all into five groups. The first 20 entries are the basic 20, the next 20 are the advanced 20, next the forgotten 20, then the communal 20, and finally, the end of the world bucket list of the best places you should go when everything turns to chaos. So be sure to stick around for that, and let's get into it. The basic 20, building your foundation. Number 100, finding water. It's often said that life finds a way, but without water, it just doesn't. And whatever the apocalypse scenario, finding water that isn't salt water or contaminated could be a major problem. As such, any serious survivalist is going to need one, a means to store water, and two, a way to make it drinkable. Boiling what you find is one quite simple option. Finding or making reliable filters is another. Number 99, finding food. While you can survive for longer without food than without water, it's a fact that not eating will eventually and painfully kill you. We're going to look at possible food sources throughout this list, but for now, in the event of the end of the world, it would be good to at least know how to forage. If you can identify edible plants, fruits, nuts, and fungi in the wild, all while steering clear of the many that are poisonous or fatal, then you stand a much better chance. Number 98, sourcing shelter. Along with water and food, shelter is another must-have if you want to not die. Much depends upon the apocalypse you're facing, but it pays to be flexible. One key skill is being able to build temporary shelters using natural materials like branches or snow. Another is knowing how to make longer-term structures with scavenged materials. Here, it might be tempting just to head for the cities, even if they were to be abandoned. But the cities might also be more dangerous. Number 97, starting fires. When ancient humans learned to control fire, that's when our species went up a level in evolution. Fires bring heat, light, a means to cook, and to communicate. However, in recent times, the percentage of us that can make a fire without modern tools or accelerants has dropped. Nevertheless, if civilization were to fail, then you need to be able to make a spark. Flint striking is the classic go-to method, but perhaps the bow drill method is more universally achievable. Number 96, basic tools. When civilization falls, there will be a good amount of tools just lying around our world, but they won't last forever. And sooner or later, all DIY stores will have been looted. Therefore, it's well worth knowing how to make basic tools from scratch, such as axes made from rock. There are some tools you need as a minimum, though, and if you have them or acquire them, you should always keep them near. These include a knife, tarp, and whistle. Number 95, first aid. With all this shelter building and tool wielding, the likelihood of injury is high. And if civilization has just ended, then the hospitals and surgeries aren't going to be open. As a result, you need to know basic first aid. This means knowing how to clean cuts and wounds to avoid infection, how to treat burns, again to avoid infection, knowing how to spot and treat insect bites, and knowing how to care for your eyes, lips, and teeth if they develop problems. We'll look at some more major first aid procedures a little later in the list. Number 94, herbal medicine. As with foraging for food, there are skills you could develop toward using the natural world to combat illness. So, if it ever looks as though the apocalypse is coming, then why not invest in a guide toward medicinal plants, flowers and leaves that can treat common ailments. As many predictions are that the natural world will swiftly reclaim the land where humans ever to disappear, it might not even be long before there's an entire pharmacy flourishing underfoot. Number 93. Get rope. This is another quite basic bit of kit that many may unfortunately be at a total loss with. A length of rope is ever-present in most basic survival packs, largely because it's versatile. It can strengthen structures, secure your key possessions, and enable you to journey across otherwise treacherous terrain. You also need to know your knots, though. It's no use rappelling down a rock face only to plummet to death or injury thanks to a poorly tied starting point. Number 92. Navigate by Nature GPS is one of the wonders of the modern world. 
but it's also allowed more of us than ever before to develop zero sense of direction. Which is a problem when civilization falls, the internet disappears, and satellites no longer work. Now you'll need to know how to navigate using the sun during the day and the stars at night. Another vital piece of kit is a compass, or else you risk getting lost and quickly succumbing to the elements. Number 91. Weather Prediction No civilization also means no weather app or TV forecasts. Instead, you need to understand weather patterns and to have an inkling for weather events that may be brewing. At the most basic level, you can read the clouds, but there are other signifiers, particularly for rain. Flowers are said to smell stronger, and some, including tulips, seemingly close up before wet weather. Meanwhile, and if you're along the coast and you spot birds huddling on the beach rather than on the water, it again means that rain is on the way. Number 90. Gardening, otherwise known as basic farming. Say the world ends suddenly, then there would surely be a mad rush by survivors to raid supermarkets for all the food that's left. But after only a couple of days, that rush will be over and you'll be left with a finite supply of tinned produce. Unless you know how to garden and therefore farm. Understanding crop rotation, soil management, and composting could all ensure that you continue to eat as healthily as possible. Number 89. Fishing. Today, there are hundreds of communities all around the world built almost solely on their ability to fish and fish well. At the end of civilization, there may no longer be any communities to speak of, but this basic skill could still be a lifesaver. As with the weather, much depends on being able to read the natural world, to know where to fish and when, perhaps based only on movements in the water. That and being able to fashion some workable basic fishing equipment. Number 88. Sending signals. Even today, at a time when civilization hasn't crumbled yet, being able to effectively signal for help is easily one of the most crucial skills of all. And here's where your cell phone actually might come in handy, even if electronic communications are down and out. Because even a drained phone has a screen that can at least double up for mirror signaling, for reflecting sunlight towards a target, such as a group of potential rescuers. Number 87. Keeping clean. There is some management of expectations required here, because if the apocalypse is at your door and you're traipsing the land trying to stay alive, you probably will be a little more grubby than you'd like. However, basic hygiene and sanitation is still non-negotiable. This means ensuring safe waste disposal and, preferably, learning how to make soap, which can be done with just water, fat, and the ashes from a campfire. Number 86. Animal Tracking for the most part, the post-apocalypse is going to be a quiet place, which means that animals should quite quickly become more and more prominent, perhaps even in the cities. A key survival skill is therefore knowing how to track the animals you see for a number of reasons. First, for safety, to ensure that you know where all the potential predators are. Next, for resources, as following tracks may lead to other useful discoveries. And finally, if you're hunting for food. Number 85, clothing. Your clothing, the shelter for your body, is very much a life and death matter. As with everything else, it depends on exactly what kind of civilization breakdown you're dealing with. If there's any kind of prep time, then be sure to find yourself clothing that's waterproof, durable, and breathable. Take extra care for shoes and socks, and learn basic skills to patch and fix garments. If there isn't time to prepare, then beeline for clothing as well as food in that opening mad rush for essentials. Number 84. Cooking and smoking. The likes of foraging, fishing, and fire making will only get you so far. Ultimately, without things like gas and electric ovens, microwaves, and inbuilt timers to do all the work for you, you need to know how to cook under primitive and testing conditions. If you have meat, you also need to know how to store and preserve it to ensure it's safe to eat. One technique is to smoke it along handmade racks, built in or between handmade tripods, over a low and smoky fire preferably for long hours overnight. Number 83. Keep a record. Ultimately, you can be as prepared as it's possible to be, but actually, living at the end of civilization will be unlike anything you've ever experienced before. For this reason, it will almost certainly pay to keep a record of the things that you've done, those that worked and those that didn't. And when your trusty ballpoint inevitably runs out of ink, paper and pencils, or simply charcoal, can all be fashioned using natural materials. Number 82. Keeping fit. For the most part, this should happen by default. As we've already seen, life after the fall of civilization would certainly be an intense and physical struggle. 
Almost every task you take on during your waking hours likely will involve physical graft. But still, maintaining general fitness may never have been more important. This means eating healthily and exercising, no matter how difficult the conditions. Number 81, on your bike. There is, though, perhaps an easy and strategically efficient way to stay in shape. Cycling. Watch almost any big-budget end-of-the-world disaster movie and you probably won't see a bicycle. Mostly because they don't really fit in with explosive and adrenaline-fueled action and adventure. But you likely will see a background littered with burnt-out and abandoned cars. Transportation is going to be important at the end times, so low-tech bicycling might just be your unsung hero. No matter how badly they've been shunned by Hollywood. The Advanced 20. Improving your chances. Number 80. Finding energy. Another reason why cycling might just be a lifesaver is because it doesn't require fuel. And while again, depending on the circumstances, fuel will be hard to find. Our campfires have sorted us for heat and light, but most apocalypse scenarios would shut down electricity within hours. Some energy plants might continue to run for a number of days on backup generators, but that's of little use to anyone who's still alive and effectively off-grid. In short, it's a big problem. Number 79 self-solar. Unless things have turned truly terrible, however, you would at least still have the sun. And that brings hope. In the best case scenario, you find a way to run solar panels. Although that's assuming that you have or can learn a good level of electrical engineering know-how. If you can not only find a way to capture solar energy but also store it in batteries, perhaps taken from those abandoned cars of before, then you're on to a winner, relatively speaking. Number 78. Solar stills. Sticking with the sun, but this time for water, solar stills are an option if you find yourself without in barren land or along the coast. To make one, you first need to dig a hole about two feet deep. Then, either fill that hole with vegetation, the greener the better, or if you're along the coast, just make sure you've dug deep enough to get to wet sand. Finally, cover your hole with a piece of plastic and wait for the sun to evaporate the moisture that's inside before condensating it back into a carefully positioned cup. It takes a long time just to get a little water, but it still might save your life. Number 77. Regular rainwater. As much as a downpour could leave you a lot worse off, particularly if you haven't got a decent shelter. Whenever the weather does turn, it'll be important to make use of it. This means salvaging and sterilizing large collecting vessels, but also fashioning flutes and funnels to widen your rain catchment area. If civilization falls, but you do still have a permanent base, then the sound of rain hammering into every single cup, glass, vase, and bucket you can find will never get old. Number 76. Build a greenhouse. This is another option if you end up staying in one place, but for a long period of time. It's gardening 2.0, and it could take your foraging to the next level. Greenhouses are essentially controlled environments primed for growing stuff. That could be healthy foods or medicinal plants, both of which you're going to need. Manage your seeds and yields well, and you have a never-ending supply, month to month, year to year. Number 75. Secure the perimeter. If you've managed to survive the end of civilization, then you might come to think of yourself as pretty invincible. But you're not. And complacency is a killer if truly desperate times ever do descend. As a result, ensure you have a good shelter first of all, yes, but then continually check and recheck the surroundings. Lay traps for possible predators. Build even low walls to keep out unwanted animals, and fashion early warning systems, like tripwires perhaps, to alert you if your defenses are breached. Number 74. Grow mushrooms. Mushrooms in particular bring a lot to your post-civilization table. Learning to grow nutrient-rich mushrooms in logs, stumps, or indoor environments means that one, you'll have a source of protein, and two, you'll probably get a high yield. You need a little know-how about which substrates to grow them in, but with even basic knowledge, you can sprout mushrooms in anything from straw to ground coffee. Number 73. Build a raft. Clearly, if you're busy trying to survive hundreds of miles away from a major water source, then a raft isn't top of your list. But still, knowing how to build one could be crucial for that day when you do need to cross a river. As with most things, there are best and worst case scenarios. Building a raft out of fallen trees and logs requires multiple tools and a high level of knowledge. Find a wooden pallet or two, however, and the task becomes much simpler. Number 72. Bows and Arrows If you're hoping to hunt your way back to health and safety, then your weapon of choice may well be the bow and arrow. Mostly because these can be fashioned from the raw materials around you. 
You need a strong sapling tree for your bow, fibrous nettles for your cord, thin, straight, sharpened pieces of wood for your arrows, and some foliage such as pine needles for your feather. It takes time to make and to practice using, but it is possible to do, even with nothing but trees for company. Number 71. Mixing Metals By now, it's becoming clear that to survive indefinitely, you're going to need a lot of skills to draw upon. We've covered wood and rock to some degree, but of course there's more. In a perfect world, you'd know how to smelt and forge, how to extract and shape metal to create essential products. However, it requires a lot of energy to do that, and probably more than you can hope for. So instead, you need a scavenger's eye, ready to take and repurpose any decent bit of steel or aluminum you find. Number 70. Smart Stockpiling At civilization's end, there probably will be riots in the streets. But the smart survivalist mostly steers clear, and when they do loot, they do it right. Seeds are one commodity that you could and should strive to find. They're small, lightweight, and they could power you for years to come. Plastic sheeting is another often overlooked but potentially vital product. Water containers, clothing, tools, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, and pain relief should all be on your list. But, and no matter how much you think you're going to miss ice cream, for example, it's just not going to save you in the long run. Number 69. Fermentation Think sauerkraut and kimchi, and your food store just got a much longer shelf life. Most vegetables can be fermented, and doing so will turn a once perishable product into something that could last for months. Find jars that can be tightly closed, add your veg, water, and salt, and wait. Before long, you have richer tasting food that won't go off. You could even tie your jars to the bottom of your backpack when on the move. Number 68. Ham Radio When cell towers are down, knowing ham radio operation could be your only link with other survivors. The truth is that it does require a lot of equipment to work, and might therefore be impractical. But if you were to survive the end times, and then you were to stumble across an amateur radio set, then you definitely want to know how to use it. If you know Morse code as well, then even better. Number 67. Ancient Toothpaste With the world burning around you, it's easy to slip into bad habits and neglect daily routines. But the apocalypse gets even worse with a toothache, so it pays to find a way. And actually, it's quite simple. Charcoal from your fire can be used as a toothpaste substitute, making sure that you grind it into as fine a dust as possible. You can then mix your powder with a little water if needed. Or you can mix mint with water and brew your own mouthwash. Number 66. Fixing splints. Be it your finger or your leg, get it injured in the post-apocalypse and you could be in a lot of trouble. One way to potentially lessen the damage, however, is to learn how to fashion a splint to compress and support the injury. There's no universal solution when things go wrong and every injury is different. But in general, splints can be made using just two fixed rigid poles and clothing to double up as padding. Number 65. City or Country It's one of the biggest dilemmas when facing the end of the world. Do you stick to the fall in cities or flee to a more rural location? There are pros and cons for both. Life in a lost city should offer more in terms of supplies to scavenge and opportunities to meet other survivors. But decaying and crumbling city buildings could also be very unsafe, and you might be more easily tracked by survivors that aren't so friendly. On the other hand, the countryside offers all the seclusion you could ever want, but it's a thin line between safe independence and hopeless isolation. Number 64. Static or mobile? Do you stay put or forever on the move? It's another core problem that will shape so much of your survival strategy in general. The pros for staying in one place include gaining a familiarity with your surroundings and ensuring that you are detectable for others looking to build a community. The cons? You're a sitting duck against potential attackers, and your base will eventually be bled dry of resources. The pros for life on the move? There's always hope that the next place will be better. The cons? There's always a chance that your road leads to nowhere. Number 63. Hit the library. Whatever your wider tactics, you should think about finding a library. If the end of civilization means no more internet, which is likely, then shelves of books could very much save your life. If there are skills you need to learn, then the answers could be here. If there are maps you need to memorize, then they might also be stored in the stacks. Especially in the early days when everyone else is raiding the supermarkets, these aisles could be your true ticket to safety. Number 62. Count your chickens. 
Raising animals maybe isn't a responsibility you'd really want with the world collapsing around you, but in the long run, it could be another major differential between you living and dying. While larger livestock demand more resources and bring an increased risk of injury for an inexperienced handler, chickens, and perhaps ducks, are a simpler possibility. If your strategy is to stay put to the point of building a homestead, then eggs could become a major part of your diet. Number 61. Carrying Tape Along with the likes of rope and toothpaste, duct tape is possibly one of the least fancy but most important luxury items to seek out. Its versatility means that it can be used to fix stuff and keep things together, yes, but also to patch up holes. It can be molded into cups and bowls. With enough of it, you could even build a shade or a visor against the sun or a decent windbreak. It isn't glamorous, but it could be a godsend. The Forgotten 20. Vital but easy to overlook. Number 60. Check your seals. With food, it usually isn't enough to just throw what you need into just any random box. To avoid contamination and the potential spread of harmful bacteria, you need to keep your produce reliably sealed, from pickled cabbage to smoked salmon. Beware botulism in particular, an illness caused by a bacteria spore that can lie dormant on food and can thrive in poorly kept cans. In the worst case scenario, the germ can turn into a deadly toxin. Number 59. Make honey. If there's one single superfood that's primed for Armageddon, it's honey. In stores, it's often sold without an expiry date or with an extremely long expiry date because it basically never spoils. Plus, it's crammed with a unique blend of nutrients, sugars, it tastes pretty good, rare at the end of the world, and it has antibacterial properties, which is why it's sometimes prescribed as medicine or recommended in traditional cures. Number 58. Tap the trees. It's really impossible to overstress how vital it will be to have regular and reliable access to water. But if you're caught without, then you're still just a tree away from quenching your thirst. Some, including maple and birch, can be tapped to release their safe-to-drink water stores. You'll need a knife to gouge a small hole in the trunk, a straw to channel the moisture out, perhaps made from bamboo, and a container in which to catch what you tap. Always make as small a hole as possible, though, to avoid causing long-term damage to the tree. Number 57. Brew Alcohol You'll need some time and patience, but it could be worth it. At the most basic level, it's possible to make alcohol simply by mashing fruit and leaving the juices to ferment over time, first in the open air and then in a sealed container. For the novice in the wilderness, at the end of the world, it's very trial and error, with a thin line between it working and unwanted bacteria ruining it completely. But when it does work, then you'll have 1. A potential ointment to cleanse wounds, and 2. A possible concoction to safely enjoy. Number 56. Make candles. A flashlight is great until it runs out of batteries. A wind-up or dynamo flashlight is better because it doesn't need batteries, but failing that, you could make candles to burn. The process is somewhat similar to making soap. You need a container filled with fat, but this time you also need to fashion a wick out of foliage. Pour the fat into your container, wait for it to harden, light your wick, and you're set. Number 55. You'll need to dig. So many of the survival ideas we've covered require you to dig whether it's for a solar still or maintaining your vegetables. Therefore, a shovel of any kind is priceless, although it's perhaps not the first thing you'd think of packing in an emergency. Clearly, it's no use lugging a heavy, full-size one around if you're traveling, but anything to make the work just a little bit easier will save you time and, more importantly, energy. Number 54. Pack your papers. When civilization falls and international borders are no more, you might think that passports and birth certificates would be wholly useless, and in the traditional sense, perhaps they would be. But they're probably still something that you don't want to be burning just to keep the fire going. Even without the bureaucracy of today, there could come a time when you need or want to prove that you're you. Your papers certainly aren't vital, but they could come in handy. Number 53. Track Radiation in many apocalypse scenarios, the true killer is radiation. So say you are trying to eke out your existence across a nuclear wasteland, then you need to stay on top of the situation. A Geiger counter is the most well-known piece of equipment, clicking to indicate the amount of radiation that's present in the immediate environment. A dosimeter is another option to carry with you. It measures the amount of radiation a person has been exposed to over time. Number 52. Read the news. 
When civilization is lost, the presses won't be rolling, so it's not as though you'll have much by way of daily details to catch up on. But nevertheless, the newspapers that are left over could prove another often overlooked but valuable resource. They can double up as insulation for your shelter if you have enough stacked together. Old papers can also be patched together for emergency blankets, and they can be used to start fires. Finally, there's always the age-old problem of toilet paper. Number 51. Make maps. In the worst of times, it will be no use just wandering around aimlessly, and under some apocalypse scenarios, that will be an easy trap to fall into. Say some of the world's largest cities are, for whatever reason, submerged underwater, or the surface is unrecognizable after relentless bombing. You'll need to find your bearings, and quickly, so even rudimentary map making could prove crucial. Number 50. Build your bunker. In truth, this probably needs to begin a long time before disaster strikes, but ultimately your bunker could become your only safe space depending on how history plays out. You might reinforce a basement or dig an underground shelter from scratch, but among other things, it'll need ventilation, room to stand, a well-stocked store, a solid entrance, an emergency exit, and a way to keep tabs on the conditions above ground. Number 49. Tarp Tents in the best-case apocalypse scenario, it's one, safe to camp outside, and two, you carry a tent with you. However, if you don't have the canvas handy, then it's back to your old friend, the tarp. In Jan Martel's Life of Pi, the protagonist famously employs a tarp as his shelter even while cast adrift at sea. But actually, as fantastical as that story is, a tarp tent, or at least a windbreak, is possible with just a few straight poles or sticks and some rocks to hold it in place. Number 48. Sun and Shade It's another simple thing that could very quickly kill you if it's overlooked. While solar energy may play a vital role in how you manage to survive, spend too much time in the sun yourself and you will eventually perish. Building reliable shade into your shelter is a must. Striving not to build up a sweat when you're in need of water is another. And if the circumstances are such that the atmosphere has been stripped and radiation is higher than ever, then it's even more important. Number 47. Wear a watch. While smartwatches could be next to useless, besides a reflective surface for mirror signaling, any traditional analog watch has a hidden secret. It can also be used as a compass. In the northern hemisphere, place your watch on your palm, line the hour hand up with the direction of the sun, and then halfway between the hour and 12 o'clock is south. In the southern hemisphere, line 12 o'clock up with the sun and halfway between that and the hour hand is north. Number 46. Collect shells. More than just a way to pass the time, seashells are a versatile option if your kit is running low. They can double up as almost any kitchen utensil you can think of. Cup, pot, spoon, etc. But also, with a naturally serrated edge, some can be used to cut and saw. They can be used as a general container for rainwater as well, and also as a dish for our homemade fat-formed candles. Number 45. Pick Locks. While it might feel like a skill for robbers and criminals only, knowing how to pick a lock could come in seriously handy in an end-of-the-world fix. The bizarre truth is that it's also quite a simple trick to learn, especially if you have even a basic lock-picking set to hand. If not, then one can usually be fashioned out of spare bits of thin metal. Once mastered, you'll be able to access all kinds of abandoned buildings. No window smashing required. Number 44. Targeted Warming in many kinds of apocalypse, it's definitely going to get cold. And again, finding warm, suitable clothing will be a literal lifesaver. However, there are some forgotten tricks to try as well. One is to wrap your kidneys with a scarf, which is said to dramatically increase your overall warmth. It's also vital to pay close attention to your feet. If your socks aren't enough, then consider wrapping them in extra material too. Number 43. Follow the water. And not just as a source of replenishment. Even were the cities to crumble and the population to decimate, the rivers will likely continue to run. Their constancy will be a comfort, but could also serve as a reliable guide even in unknown parts. Follow the rivers and you'll likely come across abandoned resources, animals, plants, and even other survivors. Number 42. Follow the stars. Another navigation trick, but this time when traveling at night, and specifically in the northern hemisphere. Polaris, otherwise known as the North Star, can always be found if you first locate the Big Dipper. Then, follow the two stars at the thick end or the cup of the Big Dipper until you line them up with the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper, otherwise known as the Tail of the Little Bear. That star is Polaris, and it is always due north. Number 41. 
Rule of Threes Up until this point, perhaps everything can be summarized in one central rule outlining what your priority should be in a crisis. The rule of threes for survival is that. You can survive for just three minutes without air, so that's always your first thought. In harsh or extreme conditions, you can survive for around three hours without shelter. You can survive for three days without clean water, and you can survive for up to three weeks without food. Although, as always, so much depends on your circumstances. The Communal 20. Work better together. Number 40. Share to care. More people means more brains, which should mean a greater chance of survival. So if you do manage to link up with others, then your knowledge will grow and hopefully so will theirs. In a wider sense, education is sure to be a key pillar in any bid to survive long term. So even if you meet others just in passing, share your skills and information and you might just make it through. Number 39. Pool resources. Naturally, the next step will be to also share resources. We'll take a closer look at the potential problems shortly, but on the face of it, communal thinking really could ramp up your chances. Work together and the food goes further, there's more variety, and there are greater opportunities and techniques to store it for longer. This is also the first example of where rationing might be key, however, and organizing so that the share is fair. Number 38. Raise the flag. Actually getting people together after the fall of civilization might be difficult, especially to modern minds. Without the internet and social media to fall back on, how do you connect with others? The simplest way is to make yourself be seen and noticed. Your campfire doubles up as a signal. You might leave marks on trees that you pass. But simpler still would be finding a tall enough structure and fixing a flag to it, for all the world that remains to see. Number 37. Expect the worst. Unfortunately, there is another opposite school of thought that urges caution rather than flag raising. In an on-earth realization of Liu Cixin's famed dark forest theory, the more pessimistic message is that you should be extremely wary of other people and should be extremely careful before revealing your position. Perhaps then flags are only really advisable once your community is large enough to withstand potential threats. Number 36. Establish leadership. Even the end of the world could benefit from a little bit of order. Communal leaders will likely come to the fore naturally. However, any burgeoning social structure will need to be installed with care. Give any one person or group too much power and you risk chaos in line with William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Most of all, your apocalypse community needs to effectively and fairly make decisions as one, or cracks will quickly appear. Number 35. Routine Security One of the most important and immediate tasks will be security. This means organizing and mobilizing an efficient, reliable, and effective system of patrols and lookouts covering all sides of your base. Find high vantage points to scope the widest possible view and establish a means of communication in the event of an intrusion. In general, maintaining security is also a continued effort that should galvanize your group. Number 34. Population matters. In the short and long term, you'll need to consider your demographics. How many people is too many or too few in your own band of survivors? How long then before you need to find and join up with others? At what point does your community become a town, then become a city? As to what's the minimum number of people required to repopulate Earth from scratch, scientists are divided, but most estimates fall between 50 and 500. Number 33. Run a farm. No matter how you obtain your seeds, though, communal living means you can once again expand your gardening skills, but this time level up to farming. This is another key endeavor that will certainly require organization and should encourage stronger relationships throughout the group. What's more, with some prior knowledge, you might keep animals on your land as well. Number 32. Build new trade. Forget everything you think's valuable now, like precious metals and gems, because most of that will be much less sought after. Instead, fuel and food will be most wanted, while rarer but useful tools could also be used to barter. Perhaps in a small enough community there won't be trade because you'll have pooled your resources together. But when the group grows, and especially when it encounters other groups, buying, selling, and swapping will be important. Number 31. Secure networks. Without communication, your community will quickly fall apart. But there could be multiple options beyond face-to-face -face meetings. For one, if any tech infrastructure remains intact, then being able to utilize it without making your group vulnerable could fast-track you to better times. More primitively, radio sets could link you back to the outside world, while again, signal fires could realistically be used to form a chain of understanding. Number 30. Make a plan. 
The day-to-day -day struggle of life without civilization may be hard enough, but having one eye on the future will still be crucial. One, for morale, and two, for your chances of getting out alive. On a personal and community level then, develop a contingency plan. This means having a vision for various potential scenarios, including escape, evacuation, emergency comms, or the coming of another natural or human-led disaster. Number 29, triage patients. No matter how careful your group is, there will be illness and injuries along the way. You'll need to quickly develop a triage system, learning to prioritize medical care and allocate resources effectively in emergency situations. Having first identified trained medical personnel, you can also establish a community health center. This will likely become a key location in your growing new world. Number 28, handle conflicts. Similarly, no matter how determined your group is to survive, there will be arguments along the way. The test will be in how those arguments are dealt with to best promote peace, harmony, and stability. It's an especially tricky science to predict, though. With massive pressure probably present every single day, you'll need clear rules and procedures for when people fall out, because lingering grudges will fester. Number 27, Master Self-Defense. As tempting as it might be to cross this need with the need to resolve conflicts, learning self-defense could actually be a surefire way to unite people. Consider the stereotypical image of a band of knights in medieval Europe holed up in a castle somewhere and practicing their swordsmanship. They're never or rarely trying to hurt each other. Instead, they're training for the eventuality that they may one day need to fight together. Channel that to your post-apocalyptic crowd and you'll build an even more determined team. Number 26, enable transportation. Roads are easy to forget, but they're also pivotal to how society works. They bring order to what would otherwise be chaos, facilitating trade, industry, friendships, and safety. Roads and paths in and around your base will also further engender and encourage communication between your group and with others from the outside. That said, and in view of expecting the worst, roads are also where you might begin to fortify your settlement. Number 25 play music, and not just to pass the time. According to a 2023 study by a team at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, certain types of music, including your favorite songs, could physically reduce pain. There's endless research linking music, listening or playing, to increased relaxation. And there's some suggestion that listening to music can even make you smarter as it lights up certain parts of the brain. All of the above would, of course, be useful in trying times. Number 24, tell stories. To understand why this is so important, we only need to look at our species timeline until now. There's around 5,000 years of recorded human history, from inscribed tablets of stone to the humming hard drives of today. But humans have walked the earth for far longer than that, for hundreds of thousands of years longer. Our oral history is almost impossible to trace, but with the fall of civilization, perhaps these are roots we should return to. Number 23, foster spirit. The majority of our more community-based considerations have had something in common. They're geared towards building togetherness. In the early days of post-civilization, you may well be forced and indeed prefer to be on your own. But as time passes, survival in groups will almost certainly set in. Creating a community spirit, be it through shared tasks, workshops, or even by celebrating red letter days, will all help to make your new life a better life. Number 22, be ready to change. At the same time, complacency could kill. There's another balance to strike here, between settling in for a more comfortable and bearable existence and always being open to the possibility that you'll need to change course. Whatever the end of the world looks like, it won't be predictable. So not only do you have to be physically and practically ready for surprises, but mentally too. Number 21, keep calm, busy, and positive. While this one is far easier said than done, you and your group will definitely need a survival state of mind. It might be difficult to see the light side when the world burns around you. It might be tricky to find hope if most everything else is dead. But for all of the fear and doubt that you may experience, there are also challenges to overcome, there's potential to realize, and in an apocalypse community especially, there are responsibilities to meet. The end of the world bucket list. The places you should go. Number 20 global seed vault. With seeds in general being a must-have commodity, one post-apocalyptic pilgrimage that really could be worth the effort is a trip to the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Located specifically on the island of Spitsbergen in Norway, 
The vault is built as a last bastion of hope for the natural world. Inside, at present, there's more than one million seed samples, with an average of 500 seeds per sample. So if civilization falls, then here is where the rebuild really could begin. Number 19, Arctic World Archive. The good news is that if you do make the probably pretty perilous trip to Svalbard, there is more there for the average apocalypse survivor than just the seed bank. Arctic World Archive is a nearby, state-of-the-art facility that stores and preserves digital data. With a variety of contributors from around the world, including GitHub from the US, this place could one, serve to restart a new information age, and two, be a safe place to hunker down in the meantime. Number 18, Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute. As far as seed vaults go, Svalbard may be the most famous, but it isn't alone. In fact, there are many similar facilities. Although perhaps the sprawling cryogenic vaults at the Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute in the nation's capital Addis Ababa are especially notable. There are thousands of samples housed here for hundreds of species, and it's in large part powered by trade and cooperation with local farmers. Number 17, Camp Century. Greenland in general has a lot to offer a determined survivalist. It's largely uninhabited and has abundant water and natural resources. But Camp Century in particular could provide unparalleled safety. This former, now abandoned military base is something of an underground city with far-reaching tunnels. At the height of the Cold War, it ranked as potentially one of the safest places on Earth. And if the worst were to happen tomorrow, it could become so again. Number 16. Survival Condo if abandoned military sites just aren't doing it for you, then how about a fully converted nuclear facility? The Survival Condo in Kansas, USA is a 15-level, more than 200 feet deep, one-time nuclear missile hold. You enter on the surface through a pair of eight-ton doors, and inside, there's everything from food that should last upwards of 30 years to a swimming pool and cinema. The catch is that the condos themselves are exclusive and expensive but these kinds of initiatives are becoming increasingly popular, so it may pay to know if one's nearby. Number 15, Pionin. While formerly characterized as a civil defense base, Pionin today is a vast influential data center in central Stockholm, Sweden. In the modern world, it's famed as a host for WikiLeaks, but in the post-apocalypse, it may be the perfect hideout. Not only is it designed to preserve data and information similar to the Arctic World Archive, but as it's situated beneath almost 100 feet of mountainous rock, it can also reportedly protect occupants against a hydrogen bomb. Number 14, the Eden Project. Located in Cornwall in southwest Britain, there are more than 1,000 plant species alive beneath the biomes of the Eden Project. The vast, paneled, space-age-style structures are built to replicate different climates, most notably of the rainforest and the Mediterranean. Although they're far from disaster-proof themselves, if civilization were to end but Eden were to remain standing, then it could be another ideal source for leftover humans looking to start again. Number 13, the Greenbrier Bunker. In truth, the U.S. is full of one-time or serving military locations that could offer something to the end-of-the-world survivor. From the famed Cheyenne Mountain Complex in Colorado to Raven Rock in Pennsylvania, but you might head to the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia for something a little different. On the surface, it's a luxury hotel, but underground, there's a sprawling apocalypse bunker, one that had been a government facility for decades until it was decommissioned in the early 1990s. Number 12, the Diefen Bunker. Keeping in North America, but heading north of the border, the Diefen Bunker is named after the former Canadian Prime Minister, John Diefen Baker. Again, its original construction came in the midst of the Cold War, when it would have been a bolt hole for the Canadian government should nuclear war erupt. Today, it's a museum, 19 miles from Ottawa, but the long tunnels and super-reinforced rooms all mean that it could still serve as the ultimate apocalypse survival base. Number 11, Canadian Shield. Say you make it to the Diefen Bunker, but there's no way in. You could do worse than heading north to the Canadian Shield, almost at the top of the world. This vast and varied natural landscape contains some of the very oldest parts of Earth's surface. The variety is key, though, with the shield offering dense forests, craggy rocks, and glittering waterways. Mammals, birds, fish, all life has a chance to thrive here, and mostly undisturbed in an endless wilderness. Number 10. Australia, New Zealand, or Iceland According to a 2022 study published in the journal Risk Analysis, 
These three nations rank among the best general destinations in the event of disaster, along with the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. All are thought to stand the best chance to continue producing enough food even if the sun were to be blocked from the sky. By contrast, America, Russia, China, France, and the UK in general could well be hardest hit. Number 9. Alcatraz In theory, any prison could be worth considering as a potential stronghold of the future. Most come ready-fitted with thick walls and high lookout posts as standard. However, if you could make it to Alcatraz and you could gather enough resources or a supply line, then it might quickly and bizarrely become a haven. The surrounding sea is the moat of all moats, and the Cut Adrift Island could make survival above ground a real possibility. Number 8. Vivos X Point Situated in South Dakota in the middle of North America and just a day's drive away from anywhere in the U.S., Vivos X Point claims to be the largest survivor shelter community on Earth. There are more than 575 bunkers and 100 miles of private roads at this one-time military location. Today, though, it's a private expanse that can accommodate more than 5,000 people. It's high altitude, remote, off-grid, and a long way away from any major nuclear targets. Number 7. Mount Pony While Washington itself could well be somewhere to avoid, Mount Pony is just 70 miles southwest of central D.C. This particular bunker was once where the U.S. Federal Reserve stored literally billions of dollars worth of banknotes for potential use after nuclear war. Today, though, it isn't cash you'll find. Instead, the Mount Pony complex has been repurposed to house and preserve masses of film and media. So while general survival will still be key, you'll never get bored. Number 6. Tristan de Cunha Found almost exactly at the center of the South Atlantic Ocean, Tristan de Cunha is officially the most remote while still inhabited archipelago in the world. It's more than 1,700 miles from Southern Africa and more than 2,500 miles from South America. And yet more than 250 people do permanently live there. There's no getting around the fact that actually getting here would be supremely difficult. But if it's isolation that you crave, there could be no better place. Number 5. San Diego Zoo At the end of the world, the zoo perhaps isn't the first place you'd think to visit, especially with the potential for animals roaming loose. However, San Diego Zoo is also the world's largest frozen zoo. It includes a state-of-the-art facility designed to record and preserve genetic materials. San Diego claims to contain over 10,000 living cell cultures, oocytes or eggs, sperm, and embryos. It's a fauna equivalent to the flora ambitions of your seed vaults and could prove just as significant in the dawn of a new time. Number 4. Wrangell St. Elias National Park Although much depends on the specific scenario, Alaska is another general location that many may beeline for. It's vast, abundant with wildlife, and at present it's sparsely populated. Wrangell St. Elias is both the largest national park in the United States and, as it sprawls across Alaska's southeastern corner, its landscapes are the first you'll encounter if you're heading from the south. Number 3. Silo City Forget the Big Apple which may well be underwater or otherwise dangerous post-disaster, New York the state has a hidden gem. Dubbed Silo City, this former grain complex in Buffalo is now a massive over and underground, mostly abandoned space with high towers and deep tunnels. There are then multiple vantage points and safe spots, especially as the site is mostly accessible only via a small number of bridges. It could quickly become an end of the world fortress. Number two, Mount Yemantau. With the name derived from local dialect to mean bad or evil mountain, Russia's Yamantau is certainly an imposing place. But found in the south of the country, in the Urals, it's also believed to be a top-secret base maintained by the Russian government. Claimed details are sketchy at best, but it's said that there could be an underground city here, large enough to house multiple thousands of people. The surrounding terrain is difficult, but what's hidden could well be worth finding. Number 1. Antarctica As bizarre as it may sound, there are theories that Antarctica could one day become the only habitable place on Earth if certain doomsday scenarios come to pass. Clearly as it is, you'd need huge skill and determination to carve out a new life here. But it also doesn't get much more isolated than this. And with multiple research stations, such as McMurdo and Concordia, dotted across our southernmost continent, there arguably is a foundation to work from.
So what do you think? Is there anything we've missed? Which parts of this video had you never considered before? And how confident are you that you could ride out the end of times? Be sure to let us know your take in the comments. Because for now, those are 100 things you need to think about to survive the end of civilization. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.